Hi everyone. I am Vignesh V. Menon, a PhD research scholar in Christian Doppler Laboratory, Athena, at the University of Klagenfurt, Austria. Welcome to the presentation of the paper titled ETPS, Efficient Two-Pass Encoding Scheme for Adaptive Live Streaming, which is also co-authored by Hadi Amirpur, Mohamed Ganbari, and Christian Timmerer. In this presentation, I will introduce the premise of this work, the research problem we try to address, and the proposed ETPS scheme. We shall discuss the evaluation of the scheme and then conclude the presentation. Firstly, I shall describe about constant bitrate, that is CBR rate control mode. This rate control mode ensures the same bitrate throughout the streaming session. This is particularly good for live streaming applications, which are time sensitive data transport applications. This is because encoding in this rate control mode ensures that the bitrate does not exceed the bandwidth which is given as an input to the encoder. But this method results in low compression efficiency. In contrast, VOD applications use variable bitrate VBR where the video segments are encoded by their complexity to optimize the transmission at the cost of adding a pre-processing step. VBR encoding schemes are implemented as two-pass encoding also known as multipass encoding, which are used to retain the best compression efficiency during encoding. As shown in figure, in the first pass of two-pass encoding, the input data from the video is analyzed and stored in a log file. The collected data from the first pass is used to achieve the best encoding compression efficiency in the second pass. In video encoding, two-pass encoding is usually controlled by the average bitrate setting, bitrate range setting, or target video file size. And as an example, when there are easy to encode scenes, single pass CBR encoding uses the same amount of data for these scenes as it used for complex action scenes. However, when we use VBR, the encoder uses information obtained during the first pass, knowing that the scene can be encoded with a lower rate factor. More complex scenes are encoded with a relatively higher rate factor, thus ensuring better overall compression efficiency compared to the CBR encoding. The CVBR two-pass encoding works with a rate factor first pass to identify the optimized CRF to achieve the target bitrate. In the second pass, the segment is encoded with the selected optimized CRF with the maximum bitrate and maximum buffer window constraints. In this manner, the desired bitrate is achieved with maximum compression efficiency. In two-pass encoding, the encoder processes all segments uh, for the stream twice. Due to the latency introduced by the first pass to achieve the optimal encoding parameters for the second pass, two-pass encoding is uh, not used in live streaming applications currently. So this is our research problem. And in this paper, we target a two-pass encoding scheme optimized for live streaming applications. The target bitrate is aimed to be achieved uniformly throughout the streaming session with the highest compression efficiency. This scheme is expected to yield no additional latency in streaming. The architecture of ETPS is presented in the figure here. The proposed efficient two-pass encoding scheme for live streaming applications uses CVBR two-pass encoding where constant rate factor rate control mode is used in the second pass due to its higher compression efficiency. Since the target bitrate cannot be specified beforehand in CRF, the first pass predicts the optimized CRF to achieve the target bitrate. In the second pass, the segment is encoded with a selected optimized CRF with the maximum bitrate and maximum buffer window constraints. In this manner, the desired target bitrate is achieved with maximum compression efficiency. The first phase of the first pass is the video complexity feature extraction. A DCT-based energy function is introduced to determine the blockwise texture of each frame as shown in the equation here. The texture is average to determine the spatial energy feature denoted as E as shown in the equation below. Furthermore, the blockwise SAD of the texture energy of each frame compared to its previous frame is computed and then averaged for each frame of the segment to obtain the average temporal energy H as shown in the equation here. Please note that the speed of feature extraction is about 370 frames per second using eight CPU threads and X86 SIMD optimization. 
The second phase of the first pass is the CR of prediction. In this paper, a shallow neural network is trained for each resolution and frame rate, which determines the optimized CRF based on the extracted features and target bitrate for every video. The structure of the neural network is shown in the figure here. The network consists of an input layer, two hidden layers, and an output layer. The target bitrate is passed as a in logarithm scale to the network to reduce the internal covariate shift. Thus, the input vector passed to the network is E, H, and the log bitrate. The rectified linear unit is used as an activation function, and Adam is used as an optimizer with a le learning rate of 10 to the power minus 4. The output of the network is the optimized CRF. Moving on to the evaluation of the proposed scheme, in this paper, the test sequences are encoded using SOS 5 HEVC encoder with the ultra fast preset. The segment length is set to 4 seconds. The paper considers ultra HD resolution at 30 frames per second encoded with 8, 12, 17, and 20 megabits per second. The Keras is used as a machine learning framework. 435 sequences are used as a training data. The features are extracted from the video segments using VCA run in 8 CPU threads with x86 SIMD optimizations. Firstly, the prediction accuracy of the CRF prediction is evaluated. The optimal CRF as a ground truth CRF CG is determined manually using a brute force approach for each target bitrate for every video, which is used as the ground truth. The accuracy of the CRF prediction algorithm is determined by the RMSE of this ground truth and the predicted CRF C hat. Secondly, the first pass time, that is the latency in streaming introduced uh, due to the time taken to extract the features and the inference time of the neural network to predict the optimized CRF is determined. Furthermore, the resulting overall quality in PSNR and VMAF and achieved bitrate are compared for each sequence. The results are compared with CBR encoding and two pass ABR encoding schemes. John Gard delta rate referred to the average increase in the bitrate of representations compared with that of the reference encoding scheme to maintain the same PSNR and VMAF. Delta T represents the overall difference in encoding time of ETPS with the reference encoding scheme. This table summarizes the results of various test sequences using ETPS. The average L2 norm of the ground truth CRF with the predicted CRF is observed as 1.02. The prediction error ranges from 0.5 to 1.93, acceptable in live streaming applications. The average latency introduced to predict the optimized CRF for each segment is the time corresponding to the first scope of the segment. Since the feature computation of the incoming video frames is carried out at the, at the speed of 370 frames per second as a parallel process, it does not delay in streaming. On average, the the John Gard delta rate with respect to PSNR and John Gard delta rate with respect to VMF of ETPS uh, are minus 10.89% and minus 8.60% respectively compared to the CBR encoding. This implies ETPS is better efficiency compared to CBR encoding. Also, it is observed that ETPS yields an average John Gard delta rate of around 0.26% and 0.38% respectively for PSNR and VMAF compared to the state of our two-pass ABR encoding scheme. But we observe an average encoding time saving of 43.78% compared to the two-pass ABR encoding scheme. Finally, the feasibility of using ETPS in a live streaming session is evaluated. MCML sequences are sequentially encoded using ETPS at 8, 12, 17, and 20 Mbps, and achieved bitrate are recorded as shown in the figure. It is observed that the average target bitrate is consistently achieved irrespective of the spatial and temporal complexities of the segments. Since the achieved bitrate remains almost fixed and never exceeds the target bitrate, it is ideal for time-sensitive data transfer applications like live streaming. To conclude the presentation, this paper proposed ETPS, a low-latency two-pass constrained variable bitrate encoding scheme for live streaming applications. ETPS includes a prediction algorithm for optimized CRF at a given target bitrate, resolution, and frame rate of video segments. DCT energy-based features are used to determine the segment spatial and temporal complexity. The performance of ETPS is compared with the CBR encoding and two-pass ABR encoding scheme using the XOST5 open source HEVC encoder. 
it is observed that live streaming using etps has a similar component efficiency as that of the two pass average bitrate encoding scheme but a significant encoding time saving of 43.78% compared to cbr encoding etps yields bitrate saving of 10.89% and 8.60% to maintain the same psnr and vmaf ETPS adds no further noticeable delay in encoding, making it suitable for live streaming. It is also shown that ETPS maintains a target average bitrate for streaming, irrespective of video segment spatial and temporal complexity. Thank you for your attention. Now I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you.